Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if we if confess, we confess our, our sins, sins, God, who, who is, is faithful, faithful and just, will, will forgive, forgive our, our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive, forgive us, us, renew us, us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. I cry out to the Lord with my voice. With my voice to the Lord I make my supplication. I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, You are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison that I may praise your, praise your name. The righteous shall surround me, for you shall deal bountifully with me. My eyes, eyes are ever are toward, the toward the Lord, Lord for he shall, shall pluck, pluck my feet, feet out of the net. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from the second book of Moses, Exodus, the 20th chapter, the first 17 verses. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, you shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, but the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son nor your daughter nor your male servant nor your female servant nor your cattle nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsibly Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech. And night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their measuring line goes out through all the earth to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom, leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. And righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. And drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. Keeping them, there is great reward. Good to see you, and it's a joy to have you with us this morning. And you can uh, stand right next on this side, and you can help me out here. Um, Because uh, today's story is about Jesus cleaning the temple. And uh, inside the temple, there were a bunch of animals that shouldn't have been there. Right? You got some cows, and you got some... What do, you, what do you got here? Have you ever played this game, Uno Moo? No? <laughs> you sort of have to match them and drop them in there. Uh, it looks like you, you got some sheep, chickens. Well, I don't know if there's chickens, but there's doves. And, uh, and so they were making a, a lot of business inside the temple, and that shouldn't have been there because, of course, God wants all people's attention to be focused only on his word and his love for us and Jesus, especially because we need to be forgiven so many times in our lives. You know, we just read those Ten Commandments. Those Ten Commandments are are for us even today, especially for us today, and they tell us 
what God wants us to do, and they're good for us. And at the same time, it also shows us what we've done wrong, but we've broken them all. And the people, what, what commandment do you think they were breaking by, by making God's house into a house of business there? Do you think they were making another God, making money their God? And what is the, the commandment that says there, you should have no other gods? Which number is that? I'll give it one, two, or three. Uh, she, she said two, and well, that's, that's another one of the commandments that talks about the love of God. The first three talk about the love of God, so you don't want to have any more gods but the one true God, right? And then not use, mis misuse his name is number two. And so Jesus wanted people to make sure they knew that God's house is a house where we hear God's word and our eyes are ever upon him. And in fact, this is a Bible passage from, from Psalm 25. We just read it. And it's uh, verse 15. And it says, My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck me from out of the net. And the devil likes to tempt us and makes us fall by not keeping his commandments. And he gets us tangled up in his net. And so I got a, a few, few of the disciples here that got tangled up in the net. We get tangled up too. But Jesus untangles us by, because he... He went to the cross and died for us and paid for our sins. And so we don't need to have any more animal sacrifices. In fact, you can put all those animals back in here because Jesus died and rose again. And that's what he's going to tell the people. Destroy this temple. In three days, I'll rise again. And that's what he did to save us from our sins. He did that out of love. Love for all people. He made his house a house of prayer and worship and where we receive his mercy and grace. And that's what all the commandments can be summarized in one word. Love. Love God. Love your neighbor. Love each other. Because God loved us first. Amen. Go in his love and peace. The second reading is the epistle lesson for this day from the first letter of St. Paul to the Christians at Corinth, the first chapter. These are verses 18 to the end of the chapter. Paul wrote, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has, God, has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. To the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks, foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of this world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of this world to put to shame the things which are mighty and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised God has chosen, and the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you for God. This is a song written in 2015 by a, a musician guitarist who came to Port Isabel and helped out our youth one, one weekend. And we said, hey, can you write us a song about Ten Commandments? And this is what she wrote. And then I added on a second verse this, to have gospel with our Ten Commandments song. So it goes like this.
You should not have any other gods, any other gods, any other gods. You should not have any other gods, and not misuse his name. Keep the Sabbath holy, keep the Sabbath holy. You should keep the Sabbath holy, and honor your parents too. Don't kill, no adultery. Don't steal and don't tell lies. Don't want or desire what's not yours, what's not yours, what's not yours. You should not have any other gods, any other gods, any other gods. You should not have any other gods and not misuse his name. Keep the Sabbath holy. You should keep the Sabbath holy. You should keep the Sabbath holy and honor your parents too. God sent His Son to die for you and paid for all your sins. Jesus kept the law for you, all for you, all for you. So love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Because God first loved you. Keep the Ten Commandments. You should keep the Ten Commandments. You should keep the Ten Commandments. Because God first loved you. Because God first loved you. Because Christ died for you. All right. Thank you, girls. For all your help. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. o Lord. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves, and the money changers were doing business. When he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen, and the, poured out the changers' money, and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Then his disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house has eaten me up. So the Jews answered and said to him, What sign do you show to us since you do these things? And Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Let's confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I, I believe in one God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, and, earth, and of all things, things visible and invisible. And and in, and in one, one Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
Christ, you walk the road. Our wandering feet must go. You, you face with us temptation's power and fought our ancient foes. No bread of earth alone can fill our hungering hearts. Lord, help us seek your living word, the food your grace imparts. No binding sign we have alone in your unswerving love. When lures of easy gain with promise brightly shine, Lord, help us seek your kingdom first, our wills with yours align. Christ, you walk the road, our wandering feet must go. Stay with us through temptations on to fight our ancient foe. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our text for this third Sunday in Lent is from our Gospel reading, John 2, verse 22. I'll also include the, the preceding five verses to refresh our memory. Then his disciples remembered what, what, that it was written, Zeal for your house has eaten me up. So the Jews answered and said to him, What sign do you show to us since you do these things? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up. Then the Jews said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Here ends our text. A lot of remembering that day. Good and bad. How is your memory these days? Sometimes it's hard for us to remember what we had for dinner two nights ago. Where we left our keys or our glasses or our phone. <laughs> Fortunately for us, uh, the, the phone, phone makers, they have this little, little button that you can push called Find Your Phone. Uh, at least on the Mac. I'm sure they have it on the, on the other, other phones too. Um, so if you lose your phone, which I have done on occasion, then you just go to your, another phone or an iPad and you press find your phone and listen. And you start to hear chime. Ding, ding, ding. Whether your phone's volume is on or off and you look for your phone and you find it. Technology is, it can be great sometimes. But most fortunately for our souls, the Holy Spirit is always chiming our hearts. Ding, ding thing with his word, with his sacraments. He's giving us his word to strengthen our faith at the most opportune times, at all times. Jesus had just performed his first miracle in Cana, changing water into wine. And our text and, and the words right after this story say, this beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. Ding, ding. The Holy Spirit was strengthening their faith through this first miracle. He does the same to each of us this morning with his word. Then after a brief stop at Capernaum, they went to Jerusalem, the time of the Passover, to the temple. And that's where our text picks up. And what happened? The first cleansing of the temple. John alone includes this, this historical story. The other gospel writers, they include a second cleansing that happened right at the end of Jesus' ministry as we enter Holy Week. Yes, there are two cleansings. 
A lot of work to be done. At the beginning and at the end, the house needed cleaning. Well, for only the, the Word of God should shine brightly in all its purity of law and gospel so that the Holy Spirit can strengthen and create faith. The message of the gospel was not shining brightly in the temple. It was being obscured by the business of selling, buying animals, changing money. That was the message that predominated in the people's minds as they would walk into the temple. The main activity of the church was all about money building and not faith building. Well, Jesus took action by overturning the money changers' tables and driving the business out, fashioning a whip, and they all had to leave. Righteous anger, some would say. Psalm 69 tells us, because zeal for your house has eaten me up, and the reproaches of those who reproach you have fallen on me. The Holy Spirit was chiming their hearts, the disciples' hearts, as they remembered this verse, as they witnessed Jesus cleansing the temple. Ding, ding. Jesus was cleansing the temple out of love for his Father, out of honor for his Father, and also out of love for all people, for he wants all people to know the saving message. It must be heard that he is the Messiah. In the second temple cleansing, well, they, sh they had short memories, didn't they? They didn't, they didn't listen to Jesus. They got right back in there and, and started their, their selling again. Jesus says in Mark chapter 11, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Mark makes sure you, he includes that phrase, for all nations. But you have made it a den of thieves, stealing Stealing people's souls, not just their money. Jesus' zeal, the fire of love burning in his heart, drove him to the cross to give his life for all nations, for all of you. Only by his death could sinners then bring prayers to God in this house of prayer that we would, we would be heard through the mediator, Jesus Christ. For as Hebrews chapter 4 tells us, we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us, therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in help, to help us in our time of need. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. And boy, do we have times of need, don't we? It is precisely the psalm. Psalm 69, which the Holy Spirit brings to the disciples' remembrance on this occasion of the first temple cleansing that describes the death of the high priest. It is a messianic psalm. For Jesus himself bore the reproaches of all men. He was the sacrificial lamb which obtained grace and mercy for all. Now, as I was telling Haven earlier, ended all sacrifice for all time. For where there is the sacrifice of blood, there is remission of sin, and his blood covers the sins of all men for all time. This very Psalm 69 goes into the very words which Jesus spoke from the cross as he thirsted, and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Psalm 69, verse 21. This is the zeal of the Lord for us, that he would clean the house and cleanse our souls by his death on the cross. The Holy Spirit was helping the disciples to recall the word of God that pointed them to Jesus as their Messiah. But there was still much more recalling to do that would take place after the temple cleansing, both good and bad. There were those who also recalled this day, but not out of love for the Messiah, guided by, not guided by the Holy Spirit, but out of vengeance and hatred for Jesus. As soon as the Jews and Jews is used here to, to refer to the leaders of the church. The Pharisees saw what had happened, that their cash cow had been interrupted. They came to Jesus demanding an answer. What sign do you show to us since you do these things? Who gives you the right, the authority? Jesus knew their hearts, of course, and would, not only, would only speak to them figuratively. Destroy this temple, and I'll raise it again in three days. Ah, what long memories these people had, didn't they? 
they would not forget these words that Jesus spoke to them. No, it would fester in their hearts. It would build hatred toward Jesus. And they would have look for that opportune moment to drive that knife into his back and remind them, remind him of these words. So at Jesus' trial in Matthew 26, we, we hear these words, even though many false witnesses came forward, they found none that could accuse Jesus. But at last, two false witnesses came forward and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. Matthew 26, 61. And they spat on him and beat him and told him, prophesy to us, Christ, who is the one who struck you? And again, at the foot of the cross, they reminded Jesus of his words. As they passed by, they blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, You who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others himself. He cannot save if he is the king of Israel, let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. We hear these words in Matthew 27. Such hatred, such hatred towards the Lord. Long memories, motivated by hate and vengeance indeed. And the devil would have us also be motivated by the same. For when we are offended, how difficult it is for us to forgive and forget and not let hatred fester in our hearts. Only by the Holy Spirit's power can we forgive others their trespasses as we have been forgiven. Only by the Holy Spirit's bringing to our remembrance the great amount of sin that Jesus has forgiven can I see the not, not only see the speck in my brother's eyes and help him to know the love of Jesus, but also see the great log in my own eyes that God has forgiven me. So our intro it again tells us, my eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he who will, will release my feet from the snare. This is the theme, again, of, of this third Sunday in Lent. Each of the Sundays has a, has a special name according to the one-year series. And our eyes are ever upon the mercy of our God, for he has rescued us all from the net of sin that has trapped us as we have failed to keep his Ten Commandments. But the unblemished, sacrificial Lamb of God, he kept them perfectly for us. He kept the law in our stead. He goes on complaining forth to bear our sin. And this is what the Holy Spirit brings to us to remember through faith that he did this for us and for the disciples. Ding, ding. We hear the word of God and the Holy Spirit gives us strength and, and rejoices in our hearts that we have a God who would love us so much so that we recall Jesus' words after his resurrection with his disciples. Jesus' temple was destroyed, but not. Jesus wasn't talking about the temple of stone. He was talking about his body that was sacrificed once and for all on the cross and though it was killed, it was rebuilt in three days as he rose from the dead, victorious, having defeated sin and devil and death. Yes, the Holy Spirit recalled to the disciples' minds these, these words of Jesus after his resurrection. And he recalls them to you and to me this day. And what God rebuilds, he built eternally. Jesus has a long memory of his love and forgiveness to each of us. He never forgets his mercy. As we heard last week in Psalm 25. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. Psalm 25, 6 and 7. Yes, a thief on the cross pleaded, with Jesus to remember him, not according to his sins, but according to his mercy. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered and said, truly, today you will be with me in paradise. Yes, Jesus has a long memory, a long memory of love for all sinners who are repentant. 
what foolishness and weakness it was to the Pharisees is, is the, the power of salvation by the Holy Spirit to us who believe. From our epistle reading, 1 Corinthians 1, that pastor gets read, But of him you are in Christ, who are become for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, that, as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Foolishness, weakness to, to the unbeliever, but it is our glory in Christ. Again, the question is, how is your memory, your spiritual memory this day? Improving a little bit by the power of the Holy Spirit? Ding, ding, as he finds us with his love and, and refreshes our hearts. The Holy Spirit continually reminds us of his forgiveness, gives it to us his very body and blood of Jesus Christ this day for our peace and reconciliation. Maybe you've been following the news and heard the, the news about Tiger Woods' driving accident at a very high speed in California. Totaled the car, lost control. It was a treacherous road that he was driving on. He survived, fortunately. The vehicle didn't. But he was asked afterwards, what happened? And he couldn't recall. He couldn't remember. He didn't even remember driving that day. We have short memories for the things we don't want to remember. But they re retrieved a black box from the car. And that black box will tell exactly what the driver and the car were doing that day before the crash. Well, God has a, a big black box memory. He's omniscient. He, he knows everything. All that we've done in our lives, but more importantly, what Christ has done for us. And that he remembers and overwrites our sins with the righteousness of of Jesus Christ. God only remembers Jesus' death and resurrection when he remembers you and me. We are united to him through our baptism and our Lord assures us in Hebrews chapter 10 these words, this is the testament that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and their minds, law and gospel. I will write them, and then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now, where there is remission of sins, there is no longer an offering for sin. Hebrews 10, 16 to 18. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasseth all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise and we sing the offertory.
Let us pray. Let us pray for the church here and around the world and for people everywhere in their various circumstances. Lord, over all, we give thanks that the heavens declare your glory and we pray your blessings on all who seek ways to use the resources of your good creation to feed the hungry, heal the sick, and shelter the homeless. Guide them toward bountiful harvests and life-saving technologies. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, who brought your people Israel out of slavery in Egypt, hear the prayer of those who long for freedom from oppressive regimes, false imprisonment, poverty, and social discrimination. Awaken desire for peace, justice, and human dignity in the citizens and leaders of the nations. Give them compassionate eyes so they may seek to help one another, relieving hunger and despair with loving and sharing actions. Guide and protect armed forces deployed and those who work for peace and security in our local communities. Open our eyes to the vocation we have as people of faith each day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Wise and loving Heavenly Father, who chose those whom the world considered foolish, weak and lowly, and despised to be joined in the body of Christ, give us your strength and wisdom. Open doors of opportunity for the church to preach Christ crucified and risen, no matter the form of opposition they encounter, so that many will come to faith. Strengthen clergy and lay leaders to focus not on institutions or statistics, but on the righteousness, sanctification, and redemption our Savior won in his gracious sacrifice for us in grace and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask your gracious answers to the prayers of those near and dear to us, we continue to lift up to your loving care those who are in need of your, your strengthening and healing. We lift up to your care Linda and, and Lawrence. We pray for, for Jasmine. We ask that you would visit them and relieve them and console them and uplift them according to your plans, using us wherever possible as part of the answer to their petitions. We pray also for the family of, of Frida Briamar, that you give them strength and comfort in the good news of the resurrection for all those who have fought the good fight as Frida has and how it's won the victory through your son, Jesus Christ. We also pray for those who, who are celebrating another year of your grace and mercy this, this week, and we pray that you continue to guide them, sustain them by your Holy Spirit. We pray for, for Shirley Vogel, for Olivia Trevino, for Stella Buchan. We ask that you continue to uplift them and strengthen them through your word and sacraments. These and any other petitions you would have us ask of you, Heavenly Father, grant us for the sake of the bitter sufferings and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might prepared, be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name. Sing, Hosanna in the highest, sing, Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Amen. Amen. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. O Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, have mercy on us, Lord, we pray. O Jesus Christ, true Lamb, seated. can eat the true body of Jesus given to death for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of Jesus shed for you for the remission of all your sins. Take, eat the body of Jesus given to death for the forgiveness of your sins. Take, drink, the blood of Jesus, God's Son, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of Jesus given into death for your sins. Take and eat the true body of Jesus given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat the true body of Jesus given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat, this is the true body of Jesus given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of Jesus, given into death for the forgiveness of all your sins. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of Jesus, given into death for the forgiveness of all your sins.
Take and eat. This is the true body of Jesus, given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat the true body of Jesus, given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat the true body of Jesus, given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat the true body of Jesus, given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat the true body of Jesus, given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat the true body of Jesus, given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat, this is the true body of Jesus, given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of Jesus, given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of Jesus, given into death for your sins. The Lord keep you strong in your faith, Haven. Keep you strong in your baptismal grace. Take and eat. This is the true body of Jesus given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of Jesus given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of Jesus given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat the true body of Jesus given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and eat this is the true body of Jesus given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat the true body of Jesus given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat this is the true body of Jesus given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat, Dennis, the true body of Jesus, given for the forgiveness of your sins. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of our Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of Jesus, given into death for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of Jesus, given into death for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of Jesus, given into death for your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of Jesus given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Yeah. Take and eat. The true body of Jesus given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. The Lord bless you, Joy. He loves you very much. Go in his peace. Take and eat. This is the true body of Jesus, given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of Jesus, given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Take, drink the blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. One peace. Amen.
please rise. Depart in heavenly peace, for I have seen the glory of your redeeming grace. A light to lead the Gentiles unto your holy hill, the glory of your people, your chosen Son, a glory to the Spirit, forever three in one. For as in the beginning is now shall ever be, God's triune name resounding through all eternity. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have forgiven us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his favor upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our final hymn is Glory Be to Jesus. Lift we there. 